Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And we're starting off 2021 with our good friend, Joe Cipriano. Say hi, Joe. Hi, guys. I was muted, Dan. I'm so sorry. Hi, guys. Oh, there he is. Yeah, we got lots of great stuff to talk about, about promo and some of the coaching he's doing and all those other cool stuff. So stay tuned. We'll be right with you right after this. Hello. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge reward until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. When it comes to voiceover, the mental game of auditioning is just awful for some people. Yet for others, it's one of the best parts of their day. Now, how do you get your mind in the right place? Here's a link to a free three-lesson mini course given by this guy. Yeah, you recognize him, but you don't know his name. It's TV, film, stage, and voiceover actor Michael Kostroff, an expert at teaching the mental game of auditioning. He's created a free mini-course with the help of VO heroes called Audition Myths, Tough Truths, and Logic, and it gives you dozens of tested strategies for approaching and nailing the audition process. It works for voiceover, on-camera, theater, commercial, or any other audition you might get. And again, it's absolutely free. Here's the link. VOHeroes.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Yep, VOHeroes.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Go there and you'll get instant access to audition myths, tough truths, and logic. That's VOHeroes.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Here's some big news from VoiceOverEssentials.com. They're now hosted on Shopify, the leading cloud-based solution for online stores and retail point-of-sale systems. It powers over 600,000 businesses and has more than $82 billion in sales. VoiceOver Essentials has been hard at work getting all their ducks in a row for the transition and converted over the holiday, and they couldn't be happier. They can accept virtually any type of payment from all major credit cards, PayPal, Shopify Pay, Apple Pay, Square, and even cryptocurrency. Plus, they can ship more efficiently and often save customers money on shipping costs because they instantly see what's the best bet for their customers that day across all delivery providers, including DHL for shipments internationally. They'll be spending way less time coding and tweaking their freestanding VOE site so they can devote more time to customer service, new products, and more helpful resources for the VO home studio world. VoiceOverEssentials.com is a great company, too, from Nescafe and Tesla to Sephora, Bombas, the New York Times, and Wikipedia. Shopify is the place to be. VoiceOverEssentials.com yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. From the outer no. reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, 
VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. And good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Yeah. So a, a slight little change in format there. We're going to put the commercials at the beginning. Therefore, we get lots more time with our guest and more time for your questions. And then you guys don't have to suffer through a long commercial break in the middle of this. Well, maybe one. But anyway, and it's not suffering because we do have great, great sponsors. It's very important to, to mention that. But anyway, so uh, Happy New Year to everybody. George, Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. It's good to see you. Have had a good weekend at Morro Bay, I guess. Yes, got the heck out of town, found a cheap motel, and had a nice few days off of relaxation by the sea. And I recommend it to anybody that has the luxury and opportunity to do so because it is good for the psyche. Yes, especially if you're near the sea, which if you're in Iowa, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And even if you're in Iowa, just go somewhere else in a car and sit by the road for an hour. Whatever you got to do to get away from your usual surroundings, it's worth it. It, it is. Well, 2020 is in the rearview mirror, mirror. And as you said, don't let it hit you on the way, the door hit you on the way out. Right. Um, but uh, let's get back into the world of voiceover. And what better way to start 2020 than with our guest tonight, Joe Cipriano, who is best known promo voice of literally hundreds upon hundreds of television shows and all sorts of stuff. He is the major domo of promo. And I know he knows that. <laughs> Joe Cipriano, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hello, back. gang. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm out of time. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you later. We had to get that in under one minute. We blew that window. Yeah. You know what? The, the show before the show is the real show. I mean, I I, I really believe that. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Happy New Year, guys. Good to see you. Thank you. It, Good to see you guys, too. It's been a while. Everybody's looking chipper. Yes, we are. Because Well, yeah. this is significant because, you know, we've been doing this show from the L.A. studio where Dan is since August 2015. 15. Joe and his wife were the first on that in that studio we were i tried episode to talk, yeah and into coming uh in tonight but she said it's okay you go ahead. It's, <laughs> but we, yep, yep. we like to see annie in here it's, i know i'd love to see Annie. but it's just so it's so it just feels right to have you to kick off the year so that's so sweet appreciate you could be here that was actually that was such a fun night because that was your first night in there right it and was that was a kick i think it was we had a, a truckload of people in there too. I can't remember if Jack Daniel was there or not, but there were there we were a packed bunch of them people. in. Yeah. yeah, we had about yeah. about ten fifteen people in here. But yeah, remember when you could have more than three people in a room at the <laughs> right. same time? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. God, I miss it. I miss it so much. Yeah. Now I'm all alone, but now we have this beautiful new set. I love that yeah. set. That is that is just killer. I know. <laughs> you know, I'm a little worried about this. We've been you know sitting in our homes and doing pretty much nothing except working, going into the booth and, and, and ordering from Postmates or DoorDash or whatever. I'm a little worried when we get back to normal, that it's like, you, nobody wants to make the effort. I really don't want to go out. I really like it. <laughs> We're going to have a new dysfunction. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If someone, actually, anybody at home could act as the waiter every night. It's, <laughs> it's work that yeah. way. So let's get back to the world of voiceover, since that's why this is voiceover body shop. It did. It kicked in today for me. I, I imagine uh, for a lot of folks. Yeah, it does. It, it's like first of the year. Suddenly things yeah. were happening. But how yeah. how has the the lockdown affected your business? You know, uh, the interesting thing is uh, there's there's a lot of content for people to watch during the entire lockdown from last March uh, to now. 
So uh, there are so many streaming shows and network shows and cable shows, and you know, they still need promos. And yeah. you still need to let people know when, when, what the shows are, what they're about, and you know, when to see them. So it's actually been a busy time. And uh, I was telling, actually, I was talking to Jay Michael uh, about this. Uh, radio imaging has has kicked up because I think that you know sadly radio um, across the country is is struggling and they're actually kind of furloughing a, a lot of their on air people and it makes the image voice a little bit more important you know to help you know be that cohesive uh, sort of sound for the for the station so uh, believe it or not I mean this past year 2020 was one of my biggest radio imaging you know, sides of, of doing voiceover and, and a lot of new radio stations came on, which was exciting and it's fun because, you know, I have that in my blood, George, you, you do as well. And that's where uh, I came from. You were from radio too, Dan. That's yeah. right. Of course. So, you know, I, I love having that connection. Um, and then the in-show stuff uh, during the, the lockdown, a lot of shows like um, Hollywood game night was doing socially distant shows and, I was doing the announcing for that, and I just did uh, the CBS Thanksgiving parade, but there really wasn't a parade. You know, it was kind of like a look back at previous years. So it's all so strange. It's so strange. But thankfully, the work has been there, you yeah. know. And I bet you guys are busy helping folks, you know, tune up their studios at home or or actually start a studio. Yeah, there's been a lot of that this year. A lot of people are like, we, it's, it's not like George and I didn't warn them. Like 10 years ago, you're going to need a home voiceover studio. You're going to need this. Yeah. It, it's like the old Fram commercials. Pay me now or you can pay me later. <laughs> so, uh... Yes, I've had George at, at, at numerous uh, locations uh, where Annie and I uh, have lived over the past, how many years? 10, 10 years or more. Uh, George has been in there. Yeah. Uh, even in a short-term rental where we, we did a, a studio that... Someday I'll tell that story, but let me just say it was a calamity. <laughs> oh, that, that ready, calamity. We, I was going to say, which George calamity are you talking about exactly? Let me tell that story. My life was a daisy chain of calamities. You got to fill me in. <laughs> that was a crazy day. And, do you and, still have the piece of equipment in, that was involved? I in do. That? That's in, my, in, in the Florida, in the Miami studio. And it, thank God it still works. <laughs> That is a story. Should I'm happy to tell. I'm happy to. You know what, man? Let's I kick it off with a doozy go, this year. Go for, go for it. Ann and I had left Bel Air. We we sold our house and we moved into this amazing uh, uh, building uh, in Beverly Hills, right on the the line of Beverly Hills and Century City. Uh, it's the tallest building there, and it's super super high end. You know, I mean, literally, you go down in the morning to you know, the, the restaurant and free breakfast. Uh, they used to have free cocktails in the evening, uh, two swimming pools, uh, tennis court. I mean, it was just an unbelievable place. How did they and get we were... you to the, how did they get you to the shopping to, to, to the mall again? <laughs> oh, that's right. Of course they had two, let's count them two Bentleys, white Bentleys that would take you wherever you needed to go. They would also take you to the airport, you know, if you needed to go to LAX or, or wherever. It was pretty so it was, it was very high end. And, but that's not part of the story. I it had was, to sneak my tools in there, Joe. <laughs> that's right. You did because they wouldn't allow, we I, were after hours or something. I, I just, well, I, I didn't, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a licensed contractor to show a license, right? So I had to pack my tools into a rollerboard case, which to, the, to this day, I still use that rollerboard. You still use that. Yeah, that's awesome. To shorten up the story a little bit, so we had this really nice two-bedroom apartment, and in one of the bedrooms, it was kind of like what we have here. It was my office, and also, you know, we have the studio bricks that, that George uh, put together here. But there, we had a little uh, closet with swing out doors, and I think George came up with the idea we can swing out the doors and put like the desk into the closet, uh, treat the inside of the closet, treat the doors, put a baffle up on top that was sitting on the open doors. Now, keep that in mind. These are open closet doors. They hinge. That are just on a hinge. They're just sitting there. They're not locked in. And because I was working before George had come over, I had put the baffle on top of it, and I was able to, to do sessions. So George comes in 
the first thing I said to George is now be careful because the, you know, the, um, the, the treatment is, which is made out of wood, right? I mean, it was heavy. It's a wooden frame. It's pretty it's heavy. Yeah. Sitting on the doors. And he goes, oh, yeah, 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 of course. And I'm sitting in this very chair and I'm, I'm watching him. And he goes, okay, so let me get started. He opens the doors. The treatment falls down, hits him on the head. And then it bounces off, hits the table where the uh, Apollo was sitting, where the video monitor was sitting. The video monitor launches off of the desk. It cleared the desk. <laughs> When that panel came down and hit me, then it cleared everything off the desk. It was all happening in slow motion. And the Apollo launches off of the desk and falls. And then there's like, what would you call it? An explosion? There Uh, was quite a big spark. There was a huge spark that was just like... (laughs) Why did I not hear this story? (laughs) Because I was too embarrassed to tell anybody. All of the AC (laughs) in in our apartment and probably several other apartments was knocked knocked out. Everything was off. Everything went off. And I thought, oh, my God, what the heck just happened? And I thought that the the spark in that kind of explosion type thing was actually the uh, the video monitor cracking. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing is the Apollo fell off and the actual the corner of the apollo landed directly down on an ac cord so it had power going through the cord and sliced there you go that corner here's a visual through the cord (laughs) you see the see the corner of this thing it's pretty pointy but look at how small that is right that is just a tiny that hit perfect. the extension cord precision and sliced it and sliced it made a big spark and cut out the power bought pop the breaker and i think george said godfrey daniels what just happened here but he picked up the apollo we're looking at the apollo and on that corner that you're looking at it was totally it was singed it was it- singed black <laughs> I'm mortified, right? I mean, I'm in this really fancy building. They just moved in. I'm just mortified. And I'm thinking I just was in the other room and said, What the heck is going on in there? (laughs) I carried all the gear into the kitchen, plugged it all in. We confirmed it was still functional. The video monitor still worked. Everything still worked. It was a miracle. Unbelievable. The very, very end of the story to wrap it up. Yeah. Is that cord that went to that equipment was plugged into the wall behind a humongous Huge. Murphy bed shelving unit that had to be removed, had to be moved to get to that cord. It would have had to be. It would have had to have been. It, it was locked in. It was screwed into the floor and the wall. I couldn't but, get to the plug. But you did a, you did a splice it. in the cord. <laughs> it was like a big electrical cord wart on the thing and i was like i promise this won't short out again i pro i mean the faith that joe had to have in me <laughs> to know that that splice i had done with wire nuts and electrical yes. tape I was going to be safe it. I, i'd look down there from time to time it's still it's still hanging in there <laughs> this, this sounds yeah. like the, the christmas tree story from a christmas story you know? exactly the, the, <laughs> exactly Oh, my oh imagine if but, that was the first time I had worked with George. This would be the introduction. And this would be the point where my business <laughs> takes a dive for the rest of Immediately, 2021. I was on Facebook. Do not use this, you know, this tech. God. But uh, thankfully, uh, Joe still I, had faith. We, I sat back and I did say, George, that was. I've never seen a calamity happen before my eyes. I use a different before. word. It has a C and an F. <laughs> Cluster, boop. but did it sound okay? <laughs> in the end, in the end, yeah. In the end, and the fact that that Apollo is still being used—that that thing deserves to be like in some kind of That's universal right. audio. Yeah, UA should. Fame. They should have that story. Dan, can I shoehorn in the question about universal audio since that came up? Oh, there you go. Go for it. Go for it. Why do you, why, I know that you're a big proponent of the Apollo. You've done packages with, for, with, B, with v, um, BSW. Mm-hmm. Why is that? And I know why I like it, but why is it for you an, an pivotal, a, yeah. an important part of your Well, you know, uh, you and I talked about it, 
you know, but I had also heard, oh gosh, uh, you know, I had talked to a few people. I may, I think maybe Tim Tibbetts at one point too. He always loved it. Um, there were a bunch of people that really liked it. And I, I think it was when you told me about, uh, you know, what you can do with it and all of the different plugins. And, you know, I was in, in our studio, the big studio in Bel Air that we built from the ground up, that was all about the outboard gear, you know, and the Avalon uh, M5 and, and everything that we had there. And the fact that now that, especially going into that rental, that you can pretty much, you know, do get all of that sound and just get it out of the box. It just does so much. And that's why I have two of them. And I actually, as kind of bulky as it is, it still fits. There's my little briefcase uh, back there. It still fits in the briefcase with the 416 and headphones. And uh, I take it with me to Europe. I, I, I take it wherever I go. And that way I, I still have my same sound. You know, I have all of the plugins. So that's really, and, and I would have to say that was a few years ago. Uh, yeah. And it's kind of like, er, I stopped there. I don't know if there's something beyond it that's even better and better and better, but I'm I'm still there with it. Well, to that end, I mean, you know, we've talked about, I've talked to you about the Apollo a lot on the show. I've also told a lot of people not to get Apollos who are getting started in voiceover or yeah. getting started with their own home studio because it is considerably more complex than a Scarlet 2i2. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? I used that focus right, which, you know, like like the Scarlet. Uh, and I used that for, for years for my remote, you know, studio. And it sounds fantastic, you know. But um, having the Apollo with me, you could do so much more with it. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like people to keep in mind, like you can do, technically, you can do a lot of what the Apollo is doing in Pro Tools or in yes. Logic or in, 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 in a multi track environment where you have plugins and stuff mm -hmm. but what makes that thing so unique which is what's so good for promo mm -hmm. i think for you guys you're so for you wearing headphones is a big deal yeah like right i mean like there's a lot of the world of voiceover where wearing headphones while acting isn't really a big right. thing you have to monitor you have to have good monitors right and so yeah. as an actor you're monitoring everything mm -hmm. in real time including your own production chain and you can exactly. do that in the Apollo. That'd be well, really hard to do. In here's the other cool thing. For a lot of the in-show stuff that I do, and uh, you helped me with the setup on this, uh, Deal or No Deal, um, we did all of those shows. We uh, For the 2019 uh, shows, 2018 shows, uh, I think we did like about 40 shows, something like that. I did all of them remotely. Sometimes I was in that apartment, uh, the... 10,000 Santa Monica Boulevard. Sometimes I was in a hotel in Miami Beach before we had gotten our, our apartment there. And we had set up uh, in Pro Tools and in the Apollo where, for example, Deal or No Deal or Hollywood Game Night, they'll send me the video clips that I'm reading to mm. and I'll import that, them into Pro Tools mm -hmm. and put them in a uh, you know, I can I can watch it while I'm reading to it. Yep. Have different uh, audio channels: one for recording me, one for the audio of that video. And the cool thing was, we could also bring in Skype on another channel, and they could hear me reading. They can hear the audio from the spot that I was reading to, the portion of the show, and I could do playback for them. I, it was a full functioning. They have no idea how good they had it they had no idea you they were, just thought well everybody does that so yeah I, they go can you play that back uh for us i go sure and play it back with the audio from the video with my read oh that one it kind of bumped i said hold on a second and i cut it and moved it and i played it back and how about oh, now MG. oh that's perfect you know did, did, and, and then of course you invoice them for all the engineering yeah time. right yeah i, no. I should we should, <laughs> we should. Hey, let, yeah. let, let me ask you this because you were also a very early proponent for isdn mm. yeah speaking of remote work yeah uh and and that sort of changed over the last year because all the studios sure were starting to accept uh, Source Connect and other remote uh, systems. So mm -hmm. how did you convince the the networks to do that? 
that was a long, long, long. <laughs> You've been road. trying for years. Long. I mean, when did I, I think Source Connect, when it used to be a plugin for Pro Tools, maybe came in around 2002, four, I, I, four I or five, maybe. It was a, it was I a long, one of it. long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then it went to a standalone. And I, I remember taking um, uh, the, the, the folks from um, Source Connect. And why can't I remember um, the woman who runs Source Connect? Who is Rebecca Wilson. Wilson. Rebecca. I brought Rebecca into both Fox and CBS to physically. do demonstrations. Physically, you know? back when we oh, actually physically. would oh, literally yeah. make house calls. Exactly. She came in from, I think she was living in Mexico City one time, and you know she was in New Zealand another time. Right. She would come in, and we had meetings at Fox, and we had several meetings with the head of engineering and production, and you know they would always come up with something they were always worried. This was the big thing back then. They don't want to put their rigs uh, on the internet because they were afraid that people were going to get in to their stuff, you know, right. and start messing things up. And I said, listen, we have ISDN boxes in the machine room and they patch it in. You just put a computer in the machine room and have it run source connect and, and you just patch the audio. I mean, that, that's all you have to do. Treat it like a Zephyr. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, literally, I think we had three meetings with Fox and we had a couple with CBS. And um, Fox would say, uh, yeah, but we don't like this. And she goes, well, what is it that you don't like about it? And they would explain it. And she goes, I'll rewrite it. I'll, I'll rewrite the uh, the program. I will change it so that it works for you. She, I mean, she was the, the brains of it. You know? I know. She, she bent over backwards trying to solve yeah. those problems and to this and, and, day that's what she does i mean yeah she's those remarkable. guys have so many products you have no clue how many yeah products they have beyond source connect and I, I, I will say that cbs went for it first and they uh embraced it uh they kept their isdns as backup but most of our sessions starting whenever that was i'm not really good on the year maybe it was 2012 13 i, don't, I can't remember but they went to source connect and then a lot of my vendors that I work for, like Studio City, they're all Source Connect. Some places use, uh, you know, IPDTL or, or whatever, but um, it's really rough to find anybody using um, ISDN anymore. Well, I, you're especially not able to use ISDN. I have a really good reason, Joe. Your box is right there. Oh. <laughs> so... It ain't happening. That's man. right. I hate That's to tell right. you, but you can't use ISDN. I can't it's, use that. Yeah. It's right here. <laughs> it's in my ISDN museum. <laughs> There's a Zephyr Express above that right there. Yeah. There's a and Comrex you know break link a, back there. My other one that I had, Bo Stevenson uh, uh, got from me. Oh, and, that's great. Uh, he uses it um, still. <laughs> Is that hooked up? Are you using that at all? Like as an no, IP no, or anything? No, no. What, what no it's like a museum. Anymore. Yeah. I have the, yeah. the binders. I have all the user manuals, the original. You know what's right amazing? There. I remember writing on Facebook. I said, uh, you know, I'm done with my Zephyr boxes. I can't believe it. And I must have read, you know, 100,000 promos, you know, for, for all the networks through these things. I can't let them go. I'm, I, you know, what should I do? And one, somebody said, uh, that you should turn it into a flower pot. And I, I actually <laughs> thought about that for a moment. Doris, but well, then Joe, instead, if, you, if you ever George want it back, it. Joe, it is <laughs> safe you, right here on this shelf. If you if you just want to have it on so a shelf. I am so happy that it has uh, a happy home back there. Yeah. Hey, and you've lugged that around from a couple of places. Too. I have. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cargo. If you're just joining <laughs> us, uh, we're talking with one of the top promo guys in the face of the earth or on the face of the earth, Joe Cipriano, uh, who's, uh, does promo for an, an imaging for all sorts of every network show that's out there. There's only one person <laughs> and they use Joe. Um, uh, one of the things you talked about was affiliate work and how that's really increased. Explain to people what affiliate work is. And now, uh, Dan, are you talking about affiliate, uh, radio or TV? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll start with radio and then we'll get yeah, radio. Affiliate. Yeah. So uh, more it's referred to as radio imaging. And uh, so radio stations, uh, I, don't, I won't say they need to, but I think it's smart for their marketing to have one or two voices that represent the radio station. It's kind of like what, what we do for networks. We're kind of like the audio image 
of the networks. The net TV networks have to work with two things. They're working with, with what it's going to sound like, what the comedy sound like, what the dramas sound like in the promos, and also the look of it, the colors that they, they use in the back plates and, and for the logos, for the shows. Um, and a back plate is at the end of a promo where you usually see a slide, uh, or it could be a uh, motion as well, um, along with the title of the show and the time that it's on the air and the network. Those are the three real important things at the end of a promo. So with radio stations, you know, uh, they hire voices to be the image of the radio station. So you have on-air talent that are the personalities of the radio station, but then there's also an image voice, uh, voice for the station that is also a personality voice many times. And it, it brings in that continuous sound throughout the day and night. So that when you tune into a radio station and you hear, you know, the best hits of the 70s, 80s and 90s, boom, 97.3, you know, or whatever, they they know that that's boom, 97.3. Um, so it's, it's a great gig for voiceover folks. Uh, I recommend that anybody who's interested in doing it to really, really uh, jump into it and start listening to radio stations, start listening to demos, radio imaging demos, and understand what's happening there. And there are, you know, any number of people, AJ McKay is a great uh, yes, demo is. producer. Yeah. Eric is a great uh, demo producer. There's so many that do um, radio imaging. Uh, is this continuing on into the world of streaming now? This type of yes. thing? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times I've been hired. Uh, there was a station in Washington, D.C. that hired me to be the image voice for their HD2 uh, feed. And they had, tur they had uh, turned it into a political talk uh, kind of feed. And so they really wanted to go into it full on and had the budget. And so, you know, I wasn't even on the air, literally, you know, in D.C. Right. I was just on their HD, you know. So, right, yeah, right. it does. Yeah. goes into streaming. It goes into promos that would be on the website. They repurpose a lot of the promos that uh, they're running on the air that also run on the website. And oftentimes, uh, a lot of these stations are so very creative. Uh, that station boom in Toronto um, is incredibly uh, uh, creative. Troy McCallum is the program director. They'll actually cut video. Uh, just for the website that'll go along with the audio that's running um, on the radio station. Well, that's like a whole other thing is like, is this terminology now that radio is taking in video now and they're calling it visual broadcast or is that right? Oh, visual broadcasting? Visual broadcasting. I haven't heard that, but that's why not? Like if yeah. you look at a BSW catalog. Oh my God. There's like a whole section in, on, in the BSW catalog, which is a radio, which is traditionally radio stuff. Right. And they have a whole section for video now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's called video rate. It's called visual radio. I think oh, is what okay. they call it. Yeah. They have uh, edit uh, or switching uh, uh, software for right. radio stations that are also live. Their morning show is live on the uh, website, uh, a video um, live stream. And yeah. The switching is, is amazing. You know, they're doing Chiron and, and, throwing all kinds of stuff in it yeah. everything's crossing over yeah yeah has, that, has yeah. any of that crossing over affected you in any direct way or do you're essentially doing the same things essentially the same way that you have been uh you know i, I think essentially yes the same thing I, I, the only thing that changes is the style uh you know we've seen how voiceover has changed and, and especially in promos um you know when i came into oops sorry when i came into promo all of the voices were like Danny Dark and Ernie Anderson, and they were big, deep voices. And I was really, uh, when Fox hired me to be their comedy voice in 88, uh, you know, I was the first kind of youthful um, sounding um, uh, voice for a network. And that, you know, started um, a change where they started getting away from that announcer kind of sound and into something that reflects pop culture and what regular people are. And, and that just has continued uh, to a point, you know, you watch network promo or cable uh, promo. It's like, it's like your next door neighbor. It's a, it's, it's a buddy of yours telling you about a great show. Yep. You know? mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Joe Cipriano and uh, 
we're going to take a quick break here, if we can, and uh, we'll be right back. If you've got a question, you should be able to throw it in, into Facebook or into the chat room on YouTube, and we'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. So we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Boom, this is where I get to talk about Source Elements. Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and so, so, so many other products. It's crazy how many things they're doing because they're, they're trying to innovate and solve a lot of problems that we're facing now working from home. I mean, not only are you, the actors, working from home, the whole production is oftentimes working from home. And for them to be able to record, remotely direct, share, share video streams all at the same time, do it securely, and send that video to other studios around the world all at the same time, they're really the only ones that have all of the tools to do this and the knowledge on how to set it all up. But basically, what you need to know is one thing as a voice actor, and that is Source Connect. Get it set up, get it running, learn how to use it and have it under your belt because you want to be ready. As we say, the luck that luck favors the prepared. So you want to be prepared when those opportunities come. So go ahead and get yourself a trial at source-elements.com of Source Connect. They even have ways to do licensing by the month and even by the, I think, two day. So you can ask them about that. Just send them an email at support at sourceelements.com. And also, if you just want to get up and running with minimal fuss and you want to see some help on how to do it, go to George the Tech, George the dot tech slash SC, where I've got a whole bunch of information on setting up Source Connect. But anyway, you should have it so you're ready to go. Connect to studios around the world. Don't make any more excuses. There's no reason not to be ready. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back. Oh, right. wow. It's a good thing I finished that story. I, yes. I had no idea where we're coming back. Okay. Uh, yes. No, we're back here. At we like to body. fly by the seat of our pants. We do. We're talking with Joe Cipriano, who uh, is one of the top promo and uh, announcers. You, you hear him on The Simpsons. You hear him on, well, he's been talking about all these places. Again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room in YouTube, if you happen to be watching there. Yep. But we do have a couple of questions. But I wanted to talk to you about, now that you've been doing this all this time, now I see that you're really reaching out and coaching people. And you're doing a bunch of different things. Tell us about some of the uh, the coaching work that you're offering now. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I really enjoy, I always enjoyed um, 
no matter what, through the years, answering um, folks' questions. Um, I encourage people, I, I always have my email address up on my website, so it's easy for people to get in touch with me. And, and I like you know, helping people out, whether they're just getting into the business or if they've been in the business and they want to achieve something, they want set goals. And so a lot of the stuff that I do, Dan, you know, with, with coaching is talking about setting goals and how to get into that mindset and move your career forward. And I really enjoy doing that. So when I do do some coaching, I don't do a, a ton of it. You know, I, I, I do what I can uh, in my day and, and um, it, you know, when I, when I have time to put towards it, but um if I've got somebody that wants to do an hour, I go into their website. I check the entire website. I send. I even go into their contact me and send a, uh, something through contact to make sure it's working. I check all their demos to see if they're working and also what they're doing. And so that when we get on and we talk about it, we can we could talk about a number of things. Um, you know, their presence online and how they're presenting themselves their demos, whether they, you know, are sounding a little tired, you know, a lot of folks still have demos up that are shows that were five, six years ago, or commercials or narration. And, you know, it can be costly, but you got to try, especially for the genre that you're focusing on, you got to try and keep that as current as you possibly can. Right. So um, I do, I do that. And I enjoy that. I also do um, probably about 10 um, demos a year, usually promo demos uh, under the Fresh Demos um, brand. And I enjoy doing that as well. And we do it in an entirely different way. We front produce the demos so that the talent is actually reading to the spots um, instead of having them read wild. And I find that that comes off more like the way we really do promos. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it takes a little time ahead of time, but it pays off, I think in, in the session. And I like to, to do it that way. Um, yeah. Are, so yeah. Yeah. Are there a lot of up and coming, uh, potential promo people coming up along? Or we always, yeah. always. And, and, and uh, you know, coming from like, well, I mentioned Jack Daniel, you know, I worked with Jack when he was still up in San Francisco and I, I actually encouraged him to come down. I, he also, he was using a different name and I, I found out that his real name is Jack Daniel. And I said, you're not using Jack Daniel as, as your name. So um, I encouraged him to come to LA. Jack is the kind of guy and there, there are a lot of great talent out there that get it and know um, about the work that has to go into it. And the, the thing that I think is most important is relationships and creating relationships. And um, he, I did his promo demo. I did his trailer demo. Uh, and after doing his trailer demo, he signed with one of the top um, trailer people. Um, and he's doing uh, great work and very busy. And he was a, he's a real good success story, you know. And I have others that haven't cracked yet but I know that they're going to, um, they're, they're just so good that it's just a matter of time. And a lot of times, you know, that's the issue is for those people that I know that are going to crack it, uh, that they don't give up and you just have to be persistent and, and keep at it. And I know it's going to happen. But you know, what, what, is, what does it really take to, to try and break in? I mean, aside from, you know, getting good coaching and stuff, where, how do you start? And yeah, great. well, you know what? I think uh, uh, part of it is that, you know, the, the good coaching. But it, going back to the relationships, uh, Dan, um, finding your ways to establish a relationship. A lot of times it could be going to a Mary Lynn Wisner uh, coaching night. You know, sadly, we're not able to do that, but we're doing them online. Uh, and to have that opportunity to either read for an agent or read for um, somebody who is in promos, in, in creative. Um, and then once you meet them in person, you have to be relentless in keeping in touch with them. Uh, a lot of people worry about, uh, you know, I don't want to be a pest. Well, there's a way to establish a relationship that's an honest way of establishing that 
and not being a, ta- a, a, a pest. Do tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, you have to be creative. You have to, for example, learn about that person. Maybe something you picked up about them that they love fishing. And you see this great article on fishing. You know, I mean, it could be something as simple as that. Anything that takes it away from, and this is the most important thing, uh, can you hire me? Uh, you know, I, I'm here. Uh, can you hire me? Um, make it about something else that is uh, an interest of theirs. And you'd be surprised at how you can you can grow that, you know. And so that's, that's one thing, you know, using LinkedIn um, and, and establishing relationships there. Um, I know when I do a promo master class, um, uh, I have a, a very good friend, Brett Wynn, who um, owns a trailer company. Um, he does movie trailers, one of the best movie trailer cutters in the business. And now he's grown to be the guy that, that runs the, uh, the shop. And I've had him into promo master class and the smart and attentive uh, talent that uh, have taken the class will continue to be in touch with somebody like that. And, you know, you end up doing auditions and scratches. And, you know, a lot of times you, you'll you miss, uh, you'll keep missing and keep missing. But you know what? Maybe in two years time, all of a sudden you get one campaign. That's all it takes, you know, if you can get one campaign. Yeah. Patience is a virtue in this business. People got people got to learn that one. We the gotta, two P's: patience and persistence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. good to note. Mm, uh, a yeah. couple, couple of questions here from our vast worldwide audience. Here, uh, it, there's no name with this. Oh, it's Stephen Blair. It's just on the next page. Uh, it says, "How do you prepare for a promo session, and would you walk us through a typical session?" Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, that was from who? From Steve. Stephen Blair. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, you know, a lot of times with promo, uh, and, you know, I think I've actually done a couple of live promo sessions with you guys uh, on VOBS going back yeah. years ago. Well, you know? could put in VOBS Joe Cipriano and watch Joe do on live on, on the show. Oh, how about that? That's cool. They're, they still live. They're still up there. Uh, a lot of times with, uh, with promo, you have absolutely no time to prepare because they're so busy. Uh, in doing what they're doing, you don't get the script until, you know, 30 seconds before the session begins. And they don't have much time for you to get up to speed. Uh, they'll play the spot. If you're doing it for a network, a broadcast network, and you're reading to the spot, they'll play the spot for you. If you're working for a cable network where they read you wild, they'll talk about the visuals and talk about the feel of it. And, you know, I always ask, is there any chance I could hear the music? And a lot of times you can't even hear that. So I, I think the prep, Steve, <laughs> goes into the years before the session begins, you know, just continuing to do workshops. Um, the kind of workshops that I do and, and coaching sessions that I do when I'm on like a J. Michael Collins um, uh, VO uh, retreat or, you know, with Gerald at, at uh, VO Atlanta or any of the, um, the conferences, I like to bring the spots with me. Uh, the talent that uh, are in the class are reading to the spots, getting used to the fact that they have absolutely no time to prepare and, you know, paying attention to the video, paying attention to the specs uh, or what the producer is telling you that they're looking for, and then turning that into a read. Um, and doing that in workshops and sessions and retreats and things like that is what prepares you for the real gig. You guys, I, I typed VOBS Joe Cipriano demo or promo, I'm sorry, into YouTube. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Oh, I typed bummer. in EWABS. EWAB. That's where it was. And there it is. Episode 118. EWABS, November 18th, 2013. Wow. And it says, what a unique opportunity we had this episode. Joe Cipriano came on to talk about his book, Living on Air, and had to break away for a promo VO job, but he took us with him into the booth. Oh, that's that is so one cool. you got to watch. That was fun. Yeah, that was cool. E-Wabs. You really get to see it. Oh, my God. It. EWABS 118. Yeah. Wow. I, th I think wow. what we're going to do is because we've got our 10th anniversary show coming up in March. So I think that's wow. that's going to be one of the the highlights. That that and the time that George held me up on the on his phone. 
did the whole show with Dan on my <laughs> cell special. phone. It's like he's just holding my picture up there, but stuff like that. <laughs> that was that was way back in the day when you would have technical issues, and of yeah. course in 2021 we you have no technical sailing. It's just boom. <laughs> sailing. Uh, uh, here's another question. This one's from our very own Jeff Holman. He's our chat room moderator. He said, I saw a video of George helping to put together your Studio Bricks booth. How do you like it? And what did you decide to, uh, why did you decide to go that uh, route rather than having George build a custom booth? Well, you know, I've, I've gone both ways. You know, yep. I've had George build a custom one. And, and then, of course, the, the Calamity Day, uh, that was kind of custom as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was custom. By the way, that was something that happened and it was 30 seconds. And, and then I had, you know, the next, we were there for eight months or whatever it was, and it, it worked beautifully and it was amazing, you know. Um, I went with, this is the Studio Bricks right here. I don't know if you can, ah, sorry. Um, so I I went with Studio Bricks. And, hey, George, you see the lights in it that you put in it? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. They're still, yeah, Dirty. there they are. Yeah, they're they're in green right now. I oh, had yeah, them yeah. doing red and green for Christmas. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I went with uh, Studio Bricks. Because uh, being on several, you know, being at VO Atlanta, where I was with George, he was right next to me at whatever booth I was in, and you were building a Studio Bricks live uh, at VO Atlanta. And... Almost killed me, but yeah, it was. Yeah, it did, really, <laughs> literally. Uh, and I've done a, a, a number of, uh, there was, a, oh gosh, uh, in London, uh, the conference One Voice, they had a studio bricks there and the rep with them. And um, I, I would just use them because I was at the conference and needed to do a session. And I would bring my laptop down with Source Connect. In fact, we have, there's another one, George, in either eWabs or whatever it was, I was doing um, at VO Atlanta. Uh, Stacy Aswad was there with me. And I was doing a session that you- um, Oh, that's right. Kind of engineering. engineering. Mm -hmm. Uh, but after using it, uh, Dan, you know, um, um, at, at all those different uh, conferences, I knew that this was the classiest, the, the best. Ironically, today, right outside this window right here, I have a neighbor who was tilling their um, cement walk for about two hours today, just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. I got into the booth, I closed the door and did the handle up. George, you couldn't hear it. It that was- That door is amazing. It was brilliant. It was great. It reminds me, of course, it, nothing will ever be as, as good as that one that uh, you built in in uh, Bel Air. That thing, we would have helicopters overhead and you know, it was, it was completely silent. But yeah, Studio Bricks, I love it, George. And there is a great video and a time lapse that's actually on George's uh, website of building this booth. And I was amazed. I, I was out at a session, came home, and it had been delivered. And George was here and his assistant. And the entire booth was on my front lawn and in the driveway. Uh, and, you know, they've just taken in a, a piece at a time. And Guillermo was here. The that was crazy. The timing of that was insane. He was at Nam, and he <laughs> and oh gosh, who, uh, who's the the rep for USA? It was, it was Guillermo from from Spain who yeah, owns Subrix, and it was yeah. Miguel, Miguel and Miguel from the rep from the U.S. rep who US was in rep. New York. Yeah, they were all yeah. there. They were here, and they helped build this. Uh, Guillermo was amazing. He was like, "Bring me B three." D2, you know, or whatever the heck it was. And they were just going... Dr, 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 just dr, just dr. in a Spanish accent. <laughs> we have great pictures from that. I just posted the links to everything you referred to oh, in, that's our, great. in our YouTube chat. Hopefully that's great. somebody will memorialize that. By the way, that. George, I, uh, those pictures that you have up on your website of that build, um, because it's good, whatever it is, I, you can buy a book of, <laughs> yeah. of the pictures. I have it. It's I yeah. Bought, and it's yes. right here in, in the family room. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to speak out of school here and we don't want to keep you too long, but I, I think to be really pointed about the question, why did you build versus buy? 
Um, I, I joke, tell me if I'm way out of off base here, but you moved into a completely new construction home that was totally finished. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you probably wanted to do was bring a contractor in there and make a big mess and turn Absolutely. that into a whole long process. Yes. And I in didn't this want case, to go through that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. In this case, like there's a certain size point where if you buy a booth, it's, mm -hmm. there's a certain point where the studio bricks cost actually really saves money. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing is save some money too, George, you know, I, I don't know how long we'll be here. You know, we may yeah. be here 10 years. We may, you know, I, I don't know, but the nice thing is, um, we could take it apart and we could, uh, move it somewhere else. You know? Yeah. The house and the house restores back to a, it, it becomes exactly. a normal bedroom and, and it's exactly. not some custom thing. And absolutely there, I have, I, a, I have these talks with all the time with my clients. Should we build or should we buy it's, it's I have a link for, for you that I don't know if I've showed you this, but the old clubhouse, which was the studio in Bel Air, the, the people who bought it from us turned that whole uh, guest house into a rental. Oh, wow. And the booth with the glass and everything, oh, they took out the glass. Oh. They turned that into, that's the kitchen. That no is, way. they have no idea what is in that room the world's quietest kitchen double studded <laughs> you know box inside of a box oh my but god i have to send you the link from zillow uh of yeah the actual listing of that you you will go oh my god and it's now that amazing studio is now a lovely little kitchen <laughs> <laughs> that's insane yeah we got another question here from jim mcnicholas uh, Joe is in a place where he is very much in demand. Um, but do you market yourself? If so, how do you go about marketing yourself? Do you really have well, to? Well, good. That's a good question, Jim. You know what? Um, hmm. you know, it, it depends on the, on the genre. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, I actually wanted to focus a little bit more on radio imaging and beyond doing ads in the radio trades, which is one way to go about it. Um, another way to go about it is finding out who the format captain is for a, a big company like an Entercom or like iHeart. Um, they actually use some of their talent, their, their program directors and, um, and another talent, creative talent to be the head of their format for the entire chain. So there could be a contemporary hit radio, uh, format captain who oversees a thousand radio stations, you know, coast to coast, that might be a good guy to know or gal to know, you know, and uh, that's one thing that you can go after and, and do that in marketing. And I have. Um, I also went with an agent that specializes in promos and in radio imaging. And that's part of my uh, amazing year that's happened, you know, is because of that. So it was nice to have a plan, set a goal that I want to do this, uh, uh, identify who the agent is that I need to be with and do it. And it actually worked. That's, you know, that that's wonderful. How much um, of your public presence that you've created for yourself, because you work really hard in social media and just being out there, like being at the comp, being visible, being, writing a book, how much do you, how much can you possibly attribute to all those other things to your career as well? Do you, do you have any way of really you know, I, that? I, I think that a lot of those things, George, are for within our industry, for yeah. uh, within the voiceover industry. Uh, I, you know, uh, when I talk to a talent um, and, and we're discussing, um, you know, creating relationships, uh, a lot of times I'll say, now, listen, let's not confuse being in a, a voiceover Facebook group for doing something for your career. Now, there are some opportunities that may come by, but it's, it's, it's not the, um, the educational opportunities, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, uh, somebody uh, might say, who's a, a voiceover person, uh, say to another actor, hey, I just auditioned for uh, this. 
did you know about it? No, I didn't know about it. And I actually had that happen to me. Um, George DeLoyo had, this is back in 2005, had auditioned to be the drama voice of NBC, of the network. And I saw him that night and he said, wow, I, I, you know, did you do that audition today? And I said, which one? He said, NBC is looking for a drama voice. And I said, I had no idea. So I actually called my agent. I uh, produced a demo specifically for drama, got it to them. They got it to NBC and I actually got the gig and I was the drama voice for two and a half years, you know? (laughs) So you do hear things from other voiceover talent, you know, that can work, but uh, truthfully- Don't over-invest in it though. Don't don't spend all your time in Facebook. Uh, For me, to answer your question, uh, uh, you know, a lot of that, and also the the book and, and, and going to conferences and things like that is- partly giving back and, and also having a kind of a presence within the community. You know, what you and I did with the Don LaFontaine um, uh, voiceover lab, that was part of that as well. Uh, I think it's just important to be a part of something that gives back to the community. That's yeah. why we're here, right? Yeah. yeah. 10 yeah. years later. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You yeah. guys. Yeah. Well, Joe, it is Always a pleasure to have you on our show. Thanks, Dan. It's, it's been a while. Uh, it's been a while. And the next time you can actually be here in the studio with us. I can't wait. That, that'll that be great. And I'll bring Anne with me. I'm going to bring uh, her along. We, yeah. We're looking forward to that. Thanks for being with us. And uh, we will see you in the flesh sooner or later. I, I they, hope they're so. They're going to let us out of our, our compounds here eventually. Absolutely. Absolutely. All Thanks, right. guys. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, it's time for us to... Now is the time to say, however that song went. Anyway, uh, coming up on this very show, we've got some great guests coming up. Uh, We've got to do Tech Talk number 48 next week. The week after that, we have Will Lyman. Believe it or not, we got Will Lyman, who's like apparently a real regular guy. He's like, yeah, sure, I'd love to come on your show. So the voice of Frontline the most interesting man in the world commercials. Not the guy with the beard, the guy who says the most interesting man in the world. And a bunch of other things, but a very well-known voice, uh, a very good actor in his own right, and uh, apparently a very funny guy, Which because he sounds so serious on Frontline, so what to ask him about that. Anyway, who are our donors of the week? Oh, yes, Lots our donors. Got like yeah, right that's there. pretty awesome. Uh, we've got Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Mosley, Shelly Avellino, Thomas Pinto, Larry Hudson, Natasha Mar- Marchevka. Very good. Yes! Yes, all right. Nailed it! <laughs> Brian Page, George Whitman. No, George Whittem. That's my dad. <laughs> wonk, wonk, wonk. Uh, Rob Reiner, <laughs> Patty... Patty Givens, uh, Diana Birdsall, Stephanie Sutherland, Shauna Pennington Baird, Antland Productions, Martha Kahn, and Don Griffith. All right. A lot of familiar names in there, which is awesome. That means they must be subscribers using our little PayPal subscription thing. Even even only a buck, and we'll reach your name on the show each week. So why not? Talk about cheap promotion. Go for right. it. Uh, hey, we'd like you to join our mailing list too. If you know, if you're on our website, which you could be right now, uh, there's a it says join our mailing list. Click on that and join our mailing list. People still get. I've got to get it up to 800 by the end of January. We're getting up there, and you get to know everything that's going on with the show. You get advance notice of who's going to be on, and and that sort of stuff. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Oh, we got more? Yeah. I just got a picture of somebody watching the show. It cracked me up. I had to see that. Okay. Uh, Voice Over Extra. Uh, VoiceOverEssentials.com. Oh, I got that already. Oh, it's... Source uh, Elements. Source Elements, Voice Over Heroes. And JMC Demos. And VoiceActorWebsites.com. Hey, All got, them. Yeah, you didn't even do a, a, a Source Connect spot tonight, but you were talking about it with Joe. We'll get one in there. We'll, 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 we'll figure that out anyway. Uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman for being a trooper in our chat room tonight. For and, sure. And uh, talk about being a trooper. And Sue Merlino, who's, Sue Merlino, who's out there somewhere getting it done. Uh, so anyway, and Lee Penny, of course, for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us for Voiceover Body Shop this week. We're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk. Uh, if you're watching, 
can get the chance to ask your questions in real time with George and I and get to listen in as we talk shop. Uh, and uh, that's going to do it for us. Uh, anyway, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B. S. 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 S.